Welcome to the BioBalance HealthCast, Episode 643. Men. Testosterone gel, patches and creams, don't work. Try tea pellets and enjoy the difference. BioBalance HealthCast features conversations about anti-aging medicine. Your host is Dr. Kathy Moffat, Medical Director of BioBalance Health and a leading expert in treating symptoms of aging. Dr. Maupin is the author of The Secret Female Hormone, the seminal work about testosterone replacement therapy for women, and Got Testosterone, the award-winning book for men that helps men choose the most effective and safe form of testosterone replacement. These books are available on Amazon or from Dr. Maupin's office at BioBalance Health in St. Louis and in Kansas City. Dr. Maupin's office is currently accepting new patients. Welcome to the BioBalance HealthCast. Today we're going to do a HealthCast for the men uh, and talk about the difference in testosterone preparations, uh, those that are creams, gels, patches, shots, all those different preparations versus testosterone pellets, which are long-acting, small, pure testosterone placed under the skin that lasts for six months. Now, I get a lot of my ideas for health casts when I'm in the office and patients ask me questions about certain things and then I can give them um, a good answer, but maybe not a 20 minute answer because we only have an hour. So um, this is the more complete answer to the question, why do I just do pellets and why are the patches, gels and shots not as good? And that's That's why I do pellets, because it's the best form, the most effective form of testosterone, especially for men. It lasts the longest. It lasts six months. You only have to come to the doctor twice a year. And if you figure out the the cost of it, if you're paying for your testosterone um, out of pocket, it ends up being about the same as the monthly gels, creams, shots. So it is not more uh, costly in the end, unless your insurance picks it up, which Sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't. Some of my patients uh, have been very successful at at that, sending in uh, their, uh, we give them all the insurance information so they can send it in and get reimbursed from their insurance, and some have not been as successful. It just depends on the insurance company, and there's no rhyme or reason there. But here's the situation. Men have many different types and brands of testosterone to choose from. The ones that are approved by the FDA generally are in the delivery system of a gel, a patch, a cream, a pill, or a shot. Now, all of those, you would think, because the FDA approved it, would be really effective and actually have very few side effects, but in reality, those have the most side effects. All of those forms have more side effects and don't leave you as healthy as using the pellets, which the FDA uh, approves one type of pellet, and it is dosed so low that nobody feels better on it, so they don't continue. So let's get to the meat of the, uh, of the information about uh, comparing uh, the different brands and why, why you should choose one versus another. Now, um, whenever you make a decision about maybe uh, buying a car or even buying a um, buying golf clubs or, or buying anything that you're going to use all the time, uh, you have to make a decision on quality. So you have to see, you have to look at the different options that are out there and decide whether you want to have the best quality, which will probably be a little bit more expensive or even a lot more expensive if we're talking cars, um, or if you are going to kind of give up a little quality for a cost or Maybe even the most expensive car isn't really the best car when it comes to safety or when it comes to breakdowns or when it comes, so you have to go to Consumer Reports. Well, Consumer Reports doesn't, doesn't compare testosterone preparations, so you're going to have to come to me for this. In any case, it's the same process. You look for quality, you look for cost, and you look for side effects or uh, possible, uh, possible um, complications. So... That's what, that's what I did, and this is from my book called Got Testosterone. I compared all the different kinds and did it on the basis of these three factors. So the first factor uh, that, we talk, that I like to talk about is quality, because 
Of course, as a physician, I want to give you the best testosterone that actually works the best and brings you all the way back to health, makes your cholesterol better, makes your muscle mass better, makes your brain work better, stops all of the anxiety that you've been feeling, uh, decreases your, your fat, increases your muscle mass. I mean, I'm trying to get you back to a younger body and because as we lose testosterone, we get old. So to, to have a younger vital body, you have to have your testosterone back. But when I'm giving pellets, I actually get that effect. But I get a lot of people who have tried other forms of testosterone, and they come in and they go, oh, I don't feel good. This is terrible. I don't think I should even try testosterone again because the types I've tried didn't make me feel better. Or they made me feel better for a while, and then they didn't work. They made me... they gave me man boobs, they gave me belly fat, they gave, so all of these things are things that I put together in terms of what's the, the form of testosterone that has the best quality. Well, first of all, it has to work. It has to work for the symptoms that men have when their testosterone drops. It shouldn't just work for one thing, meaning, say, it works for your libido. So you get a cream or a gel or a shot, and your libido goes up, but it doesn't go up to what it used to be. It just goes up a little bit just so you may want sex once a month instead of what you used to do. You used to have sex every three days, every two days. You don't want to do that because you don't have enough free testosterone, active testosterone to do that. Every type of testosterone that goes through your skin turns into a percentage of that turns into estrogen. Well, estrogen opposes testosterone. Now, women have both. Men have a tiny bit of estrogen, which is all they should have. But when you get a lot of estrogen, it inactivates your testosterone. So I can give some, pretend I gave somebody gel, which I've never done, and gave them gel. They would, it would go through their skin for a month. At first, they'd feel really good, but then their body starts getting a collection of this estrogen, and the estrogen binds up their testosterone, and after the first month, they don't feel it, and they don't feel good. In fact, they've got side effects of the man boobs and the belly fat. So then they come to me, and I would say, well, let's change types. Most doctors just say, let's increase dose. They go up in the dose, they feel good for a week, and then they feel worse again. So this is kind of the process that my patients who have tried this with other doctors have come in and said, this is what happened. What is this? Well, it's conversion of testosterone into estrogen. And estrogen for men is not something you want. All men get more estrogen as they get older. They just do. That's just part of aging. But you have to have enough testosterone to balance that. And the gels, creams, and patches give you more estrogen. So it's counterproductive and people don't stay on it very long. In general, men aren't going to stay on something that they have to use every single day and don't feel better on. So, so that's why I don't use that. FDA approves it. Who knows what the process was or the studies are kind of sketchy. In any case, that's creams and gels. Shots increase cholesterol, may have a, um, caused problems with the liver. Pellets don't do that. So you know, I look at also risk factors. So we'll talk about shots in a little bit, but primarily um, shots will work. You take them every two weeks, they work for maybe a week, and then the second week they don't work. So it's really hard to get a shot to last long enough without giving yourself a shot every day or every week. And that means you either have to go to the doctor and get your shot every week, which is time consuming, or you have to give it to yourself in your hip, which is, not, uh, I mean, I don't turn people loose who aren't doctors or nurses giving themselves shots. I wouldn't do that. So, or I wouldn't do that in any case. Um, the, so when we're talking about quality, quality, uh, hands down, testosterone gives people a better uh, feeling of all of their symptoms going away. Sex drives back, muscle mass comes back, energy comes back. They feel like they're younger, their lab looks younger. They are, these guys just kind of go from, you know, anxiety and hunched over to, you know, I'm back, I feel great, I'm back, you know, exercising, and, and that's what you need to stay young and healthy. So 
That's why I don't use anything else for the quality for the quality issue. I have um, what I'm going to show you here is I have a um, basically a comparison of the different forms of uh, testosterone, and across the top it is the the benefit down the side, and across the top is bioidentical testosterone pellets, transdermal patches, creams, and gels, oral testosterone lozenge, which is a, a compounded type of testosterone, and then testosterone cyprinate. Now, the most effective of these in every area of ED, mood, decreasing cardiac risk, increasing muscle mass, weight loss, increasing sex drive, decreasing LDL cholesterol, and decreasing estrogen is pellets. Everything else in terms of comparison of these symptoms and these signs that you get in terms of your lab uh, are all much different if you use one of those other forms of testosterone, but the pellets actually do deliver. So that's how I, I'm looking at this. In the blog, you can look at my website, biobalancehealth.com, and you can go to the blog for this week, and it will have this in a written form so that you can look at the, uh, look at the comparison, or you can get the book, Got Testosterone, by me, and then you can see it on page 100. So that's, that's the first issue, is quality. And in my mind, that's the most important when you're talking about a medication or a treatment you need to know that it really does what it's supposed to be doing. Otherwise, it's, if it doesn't, then it's the most expensive treatment you'll ever have because you're spending money, even if it's a copay, on something that doesn't work at all. The second quality that you have to think about is, is a combination of side effects and risks of the treatment. So every treatment, every medical treatment has side effects and risks, and most of the, them I've seen 100 times before because I've taken care of patients for 21 years and given them testosterone for 21 years. Now, before that, I was just taking care of women and men for infertility, but still, 21 years is a long time to, to uh, be monitoring and treating low testosterone in men and women. So side effects have to do with if you take a certain medication, what adverse effects might you as an individual have? Now, nobody has all the side effects. Some people have no side effects of uh, testosterone. In fact, most people have no side effects when I'm treating them with pellets. So, um, and some of the side effects don't apply to, apply to everybody. Like, there's a, there is a side effect of taking testosterone before you're done having all of your children. Because if you take testosterone, you suppress your own production of sperm and testosterone at the same time. And that can lead to infertility in many forms of testosterone. We give it as a risk factor for pellets, but it's much lower as a risk for pellet testosterone than it is for other forms of testosterone. So it's still a risk, but it's a lower risk for the, the pellet form of testosterone. But you also have to think about well, if you're older than, you know, 40, you've had all your kids, you're not interested in procreating anymore, or you've had a vasectomy, or your wife's had a tubal, then that isn't even a risk for you because you're not planning on having fertility. So you, ha you can skip over that one. Some of the other risks are um, liver damage. If you take testosterone orally, then you have a risk of damaging your liver. It's, it goes through your stomach to your liver and can cause problems there. So that's not a risk for pellets because it is not oral and it's not a risk for the creams and gels because they're not oral or the shots, but the oral oral tablets, it is. Um, the creation, people getting man boobs from the estrogen that the testosterone creates, that's a risk. It is not a risk in our hands because if that starts happening, we know somebody's genetically got a lot of um, aromatase enzyme, which converts testosterone into estrogen. That's just a, it's not that common, but it does happen and we can block it. Now, when you use um, creams and gels and patches, it's impossible to block all of that conversion with just uh, an aromatase inhibitor. So that is, those forms are going to give you more man boobs than any other form actually. Um, another uh, issue is belly fat. T 
testosterone in the form of a pellet doesn't give you belly fat, but it can in terms of these other forms, both the oral and the, and the um, patch and gel are, can give you that as well. Um, not so much the shots or the pellets. Hair loss. Hair loss is not very prevalent at all in pellets because very little of it becomes dihydrotestosterone, which then stimulates loss of hair. However, there are some men who are very sensitive to DHT and can lose some hair, so it's still a risk. But it's a higher risk when you're taking oral pills or if you're taking shots. They, get, uh, they convert into a lot more DHT, dihydrotestosterone, that can cause hair loss. So those are the, the forms of testosterone that have the higher risk, highest risk of that. The medication that is used to block testosterone at the scalp is called finasteride, and there's some real big risk to that, so you can't just fix this by taking some finasteride. Finasteride can actually um, block your testosterone or your DHT receptors or testosterone receptors throughout your body. And that isn't good for you. You need to have testosterone. You don't want to be using something to fix a problem that you created by taking a, a form of testosterone that causes hair loss. So that would be how we'd fix it, but it comes with a risk of fixing it. Um, blood clots. Blood clots don't, are not increased by shots or by um, any kind of non-oral testosterone but they can be a risk with oral testosterone. So that has to be considered when you choose to take a, a testosterone pill. Um, an enlarged prostate. Enlarged prostates, if you already have one, it can get a little larger at, at the beginning of a pellet therapy, but after that it gets smaller. But every other type of testosterone increases the prostate, and prostate size or can cause benign prostatic hyperplasia. It is not, none of these forms of testosterone cause prostate cancer, they, but they can just cause a physical problem, which means when your prostate enlarges, it's hard for you to pee. So if it's hard for you to pee, that's a big problem. That's a big problem. And then you have to have some other medication to stop that from happening. So having said that, you try to get the safest, least prostate enlarging type of, um, type of testosterone, and that would be pellets. And then the last one is called erythrocytosis. That means that you make a lot of red blood cells in response to testosterone. So usually these are men who had a lot of red cells when they were young, when they had a high testosterone level, but now that they're taking it again, they they, they had a break in the middle, basically, when their testosterone dropped, but now when they're taking it and it's, it's actually being coming back to a young, healthy level, then you can actually get too many red cells, and that does happen with t testosterone pellets. And we treat that by, in those particular patients, removing blood every so often. So that is, that is one of the uh, side effects that does occur in, um, in our testosterone pellets that we have a troubleshooting, uh, um, a troubleshooting uh, procedure for. It's also dose dependent. We can always decrease dose. Okay, so your, um, the last, <laughs> you'll, this you'll relate to, the last thing that you have to consider is, will you actually do this? Because some of these things like gels or creams or lozenges, you may have to take twice a day, every single day. Can you remember that? Can you do that? If you have trouble brushing your teeth at night before you go to bed, or if you have trouble remembering taking your vitamins or your medication for high blood pressure, you're not gonna remember to put this gel on. And it is, you have to remember to do this because it's not something you just do once a month or once every six months like the pellets. It's something you have to do every single day. So. This is one of those things. Is it realistic that you can actually do that? Because um, honestly, the worst dosing schedule is to take the gels, creams, or anything transdermal because they have to be done daily or twice a day. Uh, the next best dosing schedule is the um, is actually 
the shots because they're usually every two weeks, but you have to go to a doctor's office for that. Now pellets are every six months. You have to show up at my office twice a year. And then that's, what, that's when we decide on the next dose, we review lab and then you get your pellets and you don't have to think about me for six months, which is great. I mean, it's, it's a no brainer because it's not you being compliant, it's you just making two appointments a year. Uh, shots are usually given in the doctor's office, so if they're every two weeks, you have to go sit in the doctor's office and wait to get your shot, which is time consuming and not very efficient, especially if you have a job. So that's, that's one of the things that is uh, a little less likely to have you remember, or if you're out of town, what do you do then? Um, oral pills are once a week. Pills are easy, you get them at the, at the pharmacy, you take them once a week, all you have to do is remember that once a week and most people can do that, so that compliance is easier. But in everything you have to think about, am I going to do it? Say you go to the gym, you, you buy a gym membership for a whole lot of money. Are you actually gonna go or did you just pay for it and never go? I mean, th that's what this is the same, this is the same mental thing. You have to put it into your schedule and you have to decide to do it. So I have to say the easiest thing to do is to come into my office twice a year and get your pellets. The only additional uh, risk or issue with pellets is that it's, it's a little procedure. So there are risks of infection and there's risks of swelling and there's risks of pain. But we're really good at this by now. <laughs> and we rarely have issues like that. And after the first insertion, usually all of those side effects or, um, or risks drop because the body kind of gets used to it. So it is not an issue after the first couple rounds. So twice, you have to consider those issues. In any case, that's a whole, that is an additional risk that you have to take if you're getting pellets because they are inserted under the skin with a, uh, with a procedure in, a, in our office. So now I think you have enough information to make a decision about how you wanna take your testosterone and you can make it based on based on cost, you can make it based on ease of use, you can make it based on quality, but if you look at this and you look at every issue, then that's the reason I only do pellets. Because I don't wanna give somebody half a treatment or a third of a treatment or, a or, or just make their lives a slightly better, I wanna fix them. And I want them to go back to how they used to feel. And that's our goal. So that's all of the information I have <laughs> and that I know about comparing different forms of testosterone and how I look at it then you can look at this information and decide for yourself, because everybody's different, what you want to do. Thanks for listening today. Email your questions or comments to podcast at biobalancehealth.com. You can find the Biobalance HealthCast on iTunes and on YouTube. For more information about bioidentical hormone pellet therapy and other reverse aging solutions, visit biobalancehealth.com or call 314-993-0963. You can find Dr. Maupin on Twitter at Dr. Kathy Maupin and on Facebook at facebook.com slash biobalancehealth.